One question in the international arena. Mm -hmm. There's a concept out there that is sometimes called environmental security, which means different things to different people, but I think in a highly generalized sense it has to do with reducing the chances of famine and refugee populations and so forth that are a result of war. Mm -hmm. What do you think is a role that the United States could be playing that we are not yet playing to help uh, in those kinds of situations? What can we do to encourage stability through environmental measures abroad? First, stop starting wars that we've been starting that should not have been started. Start, you know, work for peaceful solutions, first of all, to conflicts. That's the first thing we've got to do. Secondly, uh, in refugee camps, for example, and, and we're working on a lot of this now with the Peace Corps, showing refugees uh, how to build stoves that are energy efficient, you know, and using recyclables and really uh, in the refugee camps re-educating people on how not to burn trash, for instance, and how to do things differently because they have nothing, nothing. And so I think we can encourage through our, our USAID efforts uh, conservation measures and, and show people, and I think in Africa, for example, that we have a prime opportunity to lead because people, there's so many refugees there and, and so much dislocation that we're starting anew. So why not start anew the right way? What, what is it that motivates you personally? What motivates me personally? Yeah. <laughs> what, what makes you want to get out there and do all the wonderful things that you do? Have so your no faith? option. Yeah, no, I have no option. You know, uh, you mentioned my book earlier, and I kind of talked about it, but uh, in the first chapter, where uh, I almost didn't get here. You know, my mother uh, was left to die, and she uh, needed a C-section when I was born, and because of racism and because the doctors and nurses uh, at this Catholic hospital wouldn't take care of her and didn't want her in there, they just kind of left her there, and so finally, when they uh, or realized she was out of it and almost gone, they rushed her into the delivery room and they didn't know what to do because she needed C-section, it was too late. So they ended up delivering me uh, using forceps. Mm -hmm. So I almost didn't get here. Mm -hmm. And so it was because of racism, discrimination, sex, and the whole bit that um, kept me from almost living. And so, you know, from day one, um, I knew that as a child. My mother reminds me of that every day. <laughs> 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 you better. Okay. You know, you're living. And I almost didn't get here. So, you know, I guess it comes from that, being born under those circumstances. Okay. What is your greatest hope and your greatest fear for the future of the planet as a whole? Well, my greatest um, fear is that people don't believe that climate change is real and we don't take the necessary steps to... Uh, do anything, and it goes too slow, and then we can't get legislation passed here to fix it or to begin to be part of the international community to try to address it in a big way. That's my greatest fear, mm -hmm. that the forces of greed win, mm -hmm. okay? And we've got to be vigilant, and we have to do more, you know? Um, I want to mention, though, one deal. Remember this bill number, HR 330, my Metro Economies Green Act, because what we're trying to do is establish grant programs around the country uh, in urban areas primarily and some in rural areas for green job training and creation and uh, environmental management and show uh, how we could use models, 10 models around the country hmm. that are um, examples of what we can do. And this would involve uh, training young people like we do in Oakland at the Cyprus Mandela. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, program in the green job industry, but also it would uh, create a national institute to serve as a clearinghouse for all the best practices, information uh, in order to facilitate the green job industry and the green jobs movement. That's and tremendous. that bill is a really good bill. And um, it's beginning to move forward. Also, I have another resolution, uh, HR 98, that recognizes the role of women uh, as, and the impact of climate change on women and uh, says that we need to include women to provide, um, you know, we, we need to provide adequate resources to women because women need to be more involved uh, with uh, the adaptation um, of climate change initiatives and global warming, whatever. 
So that's a bill we're trying to work on. And um, we're trying to make sure that every um, Bush policy that was put into effect that rolled back all of the environmental regulations, we're trying to, to figure out how to uh, hold them accountable and how to begin to really um, regroup. Let me just kind of mm -hmm. read this to you. It's H.R. 585. It's called the Environment, Public Health, and Restoration Act. What this bill does is direct the Academy of Sciences to evaluate and make recommendations to address 10 of the most egregious um, changes to federal rules and regulations under the Bush administration. Wow. So we're trying to um, look at the harmful impacts that um, the deregulation <laughs> under Bush mm -hmm what happened there and then to try to re-regulate. Wow. So that's, that's huge. a big piece. So we're working on that. So anyone who's listening to this, help us get your member of Congress to co-sponsor H.R. 585. The one you mentioned on climate change in women, mm -hmm. is, is there a sense that women are a, a more difficult audience to reach? Well, uh, yeah. And, and the effects uh, will be um, probably twice as uh, damaging, you know. Women uh, have to um, have children to raise, and in many of the developing countries, they're the breadwinner in a lot of ways. Uh, and so there's specific strategies that we need to uh, put together to help women adapt and to help women use energy efficiency, efficient kind of, you know, measures to help with climate change. So women, yeah, uh, in their role as mothers, uh, and girls and mothers, mm -hmm. but as wives, they have a lot on their shoulders, <laughs> and so we have to help them in a big way. And so that's what HR 98, and I talked to Secretary Clinton about that. She likes to help. So we're going to move forward. <laughs> well put. Is there anything else uh -huh. you want to add? No, I'm glad you guys are doing this, and I'm glad we're talking to young people because I have a lot of faith that uh, we're going to address this. Uh, if some people say not in my lifetime, but I say in my lifetime. <laughs> I have five grandchildren, an 85-year-old mother, a sister with MS. You know, got a lot of stuff just personally that I think uh, is an example of why uh, we have to do this or why I want to do this and make sure that we address um, all of these issues in a big way, quickly, and young people can do it. Congresswoman, thank you so much for being on Vital Voices of the Environment. Good. Pleasure. Well, good to be with you. This has been Vital Voices of the Environment, a Marcel Day production.